Okay, if you could just repeat your name and your how you would like us to accredit you, your job title. Okay. I'm Francisco José Pérez Torrado. I am professor of geology of the University of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. Perfect. Thank you, Paco, for speaking to us today. Uh, um, if I hear anything on here, I'll have to stop and we'll do it again. But, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Okay. okay. So, Paco, you have been working here uh, since the beginning of the eruption, coming yes. and going. What's been your experience so far? Well, uh, really, my work started before the eruption, when the uh, uh, be because I, I uh, belong to the scientific committee of Pivolka and uh, representation of my university. And uh, we started to, to meet every day, uh, one week before the eruption, uh, when the seismic crisis and the, and the gases just uh, uh, was the interpretation that it was a, a pre-eruptive scenario. So uh, from that moment, we started just to work, to, to analyze the previous history, in, in my case, in geology, to, to record, analyze the previous uh, uh, historic eruption and the prehistoric eruption in, on, in all these reef areas that we call Cumbre Vieja Reef uh, Area. That is a, like a, a complex volcano uh, with, uh, that belongs to the very the most recent part of the island. And uh, uh, so we, we are almost sure that the next eruption will be in this part of the area and related to the reef of the Cumbre Vieja volcano. And since eruption, after the first day, I, I came here in, at, at La Palma uh, to work to take a sample, lava sample and, uh, and pyroclastic deposit, uh, to, because we are just uh, to collaborate with many other college, national and international, uh, to make different studies. For example, with the French college of, of the University Clement Ferrand, we, we collect the very very fine as uh, particle to study the possibility to affection of the of the cell of the cell uh, sorry lung. Se dice? The cellula pulmonare uh, lung cells lung cell to the affection of the lung cell and um, also just for another college that my university to take a big big uh, a lot of kilo of, uh, of ash sample to study the possibility that that sample at, at the future will be a good uh, material for cement or for agricultural technical and uh, for the people that the other colleagues that are now in this moment at La Palma with me to study the geochemistry of, uh, of the magma where the source the original source in the mantle where the the, the time of uh, of this magma to uh, to um, go up to the surface to the different reservoir and the, differ the chemical differentiation of the magma because the chemical differentiation of the magma is a very very interesting just to know at the end the uh, the eruptive style that uh, now is always strombolian but uh, it is necessary to know the geochemistry and the petrography of the of the of the rocks to know the different uh, sources of the of the magma. And uh, for example, just at the first week after the first week of the eruption, we note that the lava flow and the, and the, and the pyroclastic deposit that are coming are more uh, primitive. That means more, more or less, to, to, to in the simple language, more basaltic. That means that the source must be deep that the first uh, magma that arrived to the surface. And that's the key also, together with the seismic and geodetic, and geodetic interpretation, to understand that this eruption will be uh, high. Because if we are a deep source that uh, from time to time feed the surface uh, uh, source or reservoir, uh, the volume, the final volume involved in this eruption will be um, high. That's a really good summary of what's going on. Perhaps we could put it a little bit more briefly now. So if I say to you, this eruption is a basaltic eruption. Um, what has been, the, just in a few words, 
what has what do we know about the evolution of this eruption? Okay, this eruption is a, is a basaltic, in the simple way, basaltic composition, really at the fry, basonai, but uh, that means that uh, have not a very high viscosity, so the possibility to trap the high amount of gases not very not very strong. So finally, the eruption will be in a strombolian uh, style. That means in the top of the volcanic cone that is starting to, to, to develop with the eruption will be the always the pyroclastic column of uh, pyroclastic material and gases, and then the bottom of the, of the cone will be the lava flow. Uh, this is the typical strombolian eruption, and that means that it's not very high explosivity eruption, so no very dangerous eruption. Really, for the people of La Palma and the many people that lost everything, uh, is ter terrified. It's just very, very dangerous. Not, not dangerous, very terrific eruption because he lost everything, but nobody lost their life. And uh, in the big, big explosion in, 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 volcan in, vol in volcanology, we have uh, an scale of the magnitude of the eruption that between zero and eight. And this eruption now is between two and three. So that means it's a, it's a high eruption. Compared with the other historical eruption in La Palma, it's the, it's the eruption that has more volume of magma involved and more surface covered by the lava flow and more uh, property destroyed. Uh, but in the, in the, uh, just in the key of the global planet, this eruption is thrombolian style, no very, very explosive eruption, so we can manage the eruption without no big problem for the civil protection. This is an important key and something I wanted to talk about because obviously you're a member of Pevolca. Uh, can you just explain to us what Pevolca is and who the members are? Well, the, the, the Pevolca is the Plan Especial de Alerta Volcanica in Canarias. Uh, it uh, has a scientific committee and also directive committee, and the scientific committee is just to uh, advertisement or to, to make the, the advertisement to the director plan to, of, the, um, of the signal of the eruption and the, how the eruption is uh, just uh, developing in the, in the, what to say, in the scientific, uh, uh, sorry. So you have scientists on the one hand? Exactly. Who are... And to, the, to, to make so the advertisement. Of, yeah. um, I think he could just deliver the lines to you because he's... he's yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. We'll so just, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just, just keep it just on. Just talk, talk to me, that would be easier. Okay, Otherwise, easier. we're going to... Sorry. Pour, no, 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 it's, no, it's, no, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. It's, difficult. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. it's impossible. And we're just so grateful that you made the time because I yeah. know you're really busy. Um, but I also think your experience is really important to record. So let's... Yeah. Let's just go back to what Pevolca is, because mm -hmm. on the outside people hear Pevolca, but they don't mm. know. So if I ask you again, uh, and perhaps you could just tell us it's a mixture of the local or, or whoever the official officials and scientists and the scientists. So the, 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 the scientific committee, we So it starts again, sorry. The, the, the data. Pevolca so, is. So uh, what, what is Pevolca? Pevolca is the plan especial para la alerta volcánica in Canarias, and I have a different committee. We, I belong to the scientific committee, and the scientific committee is just the, the different institution, and, and not only only the institutions that are in the Pivolka, also the other institution, national, international, that collaborate with us to obtain the scientific data to uh, to give to the directive committee, just to understand how is the eruption, how the lava flow will flow in the different direction or the different chain, the morphology, the morphological chain the, in the cone will just uh, uh, um, translate to the different uh, to different direction of the lava flow and something and uh, and uh, then the directive committee is just the people that are civil protection that uh, make uh, the different and the different uh, police and different estimates that uh, make the final decision of uh, evacuation, of uh, exclusion, so on, and, and something. And I think my impression that I belong also to the 
the, to the scientific committee science the uh, last eruption in Canaria in the uh, 2000, 20, 20, 20, 20, 2011. 20, sorry, 2011, 2011, and El Hierro, and that eruption that was in submarine and no promote no 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 was was no danger and no problem with the uh, with the no destroy the house and nothing but was the the key that this eruption the management of this eruption is much better also for the scientific committee and also for the identity committee just much better to the management of this eruption La Palma because we are just the experience previous experience at Lierro. Great so let's just break that down because this is really key information that we want to get across. Who is ultimately, who takes the final decision in Pivolka? Uh, the final decision of the Pivolka is just the different estament of the directive committee. Uh, it's a, a, a coordinator. Who that is, is the coordinator? Uh, Miguel Ángel Marcuende. Okay. The coordinator, the or directive, uh, director technical uh, uh, of the Directive committee. And is he a scientist or a uh, no, no. Uh, they, they are authorities. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Canarian administrative authorities, okay. and they are the final decision of uh, evacuation of uh, of uh, uh, the limitation of the perimeter of the exclusion zone. Even for us, for scientific, they are the final decision. Is to say, scientific cannot approach more than 500 meters to the cinder cone, or no more to the 5,000 uh, meter because the scientific data we will give them say now is the proximity is higher or something, but the final decision of, of all this uh, kind of, uh, of uh, decision are the directive committee. The directive committee. Uh, what responsibility? Director committee, yes. Yes. Uh, what responsibility do politicians have in Bovolka? The, the, the we see Pedro Sánchez coming, we see the, the President well, de Cabildo, do the politicians uh, have any... Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Te lo explico en español. No estoy seguro quién es al final el que toma la última decisión. No sé si el presidente del gobierno de Canarias. Uh, todos, supuestamente las administraciones están trabajando de forma coordinada, pero eh, la autoridad final está reside en el Pevolca. Y este Miguel Ángel Morcuente es el director técnico, pero yo no sé él de quién recibe órdenes, si del consejero del que depende o del gobierno de Canarias. Del gobierno de la nación realmente solo es apoyo administrativo, eh, económico, pero no. Pero lo he dicho en español porque no estoy seguro. La verdad que del, 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 de la, del equipo directivo, del equipo director, la verdad es que no... Yo, Conozco bien al científico, pero el otro no, no lo conozco. No, no, okay. no sé bien porque okay. es, 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 es político. Yeah. Son decisiones políticas y no, no sé bien. So, just to sum, if you could just summarize in English, it's not, you're not very sure of who the ultimate. No, I'm not sure. Who the ultimate person? If you could just say. You know. I'm, I'm not sure with the last person that take the decision, but uh, I'm sure that this very clear this decision and the final decision who is the. The, the estimate of the person, I'm, I'm sure that is very clear, but I, I really know, I only know the scientific committee. Perfect. So do you feel um, that it's working well? So the, yes. you're a scientist, ah, you're yes. informing Pevolka, yes. is that, yes. and then they take a decision? Is that yes. working well? Yes, I think so. And much better now than Alierro. What specifically because is Because are more, more easy and more direct the relationship and the order are more clear. For scientific and for general public, I, I, it's my, my feeling. Great. We were at a meeting uh, in Fuencaliente a few days ago, and members of the public were asking questions, and it was very interesting because it clarified what they felt they were, the information they were getting and the information they were. And one of the questions that came up was, why did it, we come, why did it erupt when the traffic light was on yellow? So when the when the eruption started, mm -hmm. we have a warning system here. Yes. Uh, green, yellow, yes. orange, red. Mm -hmm. But when the eruption started, the alert was yellow. No, was red. Just at, at the uh, north. Well, I don't know if chain. Uh, uh, ah, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry. Don't worry, don't worry. Tranquilo. Well, 
we uh, just on Saturday, one day before, in uh, 18. No? Uh, Saturday was the 18th of September. 18, yes, on Saturday, the seismic activity was very, very superficial and increased. But just to change to the red color means that all the area will be uh, uh, will be just evacuated, and that is the problem. Because with the, the technology and the science, actually, we cannot say how many days of seismic precursors can be before the starting of the eruption. So uh, we say, uh, okay, we are just in a very, very clear productive scenario, but we don't know how many days we start the eruption. And at that moment, the civil authority is starting to promote the evacuation of the low mobility person and person with problem. And also on Sunday morning, when the seismic, uh, seismic uh, activity increased and always the hypocenter was more and more sufficient. That means the magma is just coming. But uh, we, even, even myself and the scientific committee, we always thought that uh, maybe the seismic crisis will lose at least more than week, week or two weeks, because the two uh, historical eruptions in La Palma that we have a uh, note and, and, and a scientific data relate that uh, weeks before, even months before, all the people feeling the seismic before the eruption. We call the uh, semicida sentida, the, that the people uh, note the seismic uh, vibration. And ha here, in, for this eruption, was only one day before. And because of that, we don't change the, red, uh, the, the, the traffic light to the red color, because we are not sure if the crisis before the eruption, we lost one day, one week, one month. But uh, on Saturday, we are just almost sure that it will be very short, but no possibility to say how many days. Uh, because of that, we cannot change the, 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 the color, because the change the color just is just the evacuation at that moment. It will be the most now, we know that yeah, will be the better. Looking back, we have 2020 vision. Exactly. But there is another possibility. We were on yellow. We could have changed it to orange. And yes. orange would have meant that people would have been closer to having everything prepared and getting everything out. Because it was on yellow, maybe people weren't taking it very seriously. Do you regret, perhaps, that it wasn't changed to orange? I think he changed. Uh, I, I'm not sure, really, because uh, I just only know the the, the scientific data, but I think that they promote in, on Saturday, on, Friday, on Sunday morning, promote the evacuation of uh, general evacuation of the of this area. But in this area, there are many, many people. So, and we know that we just in volcanology we can have more or less security about the when and how, how thrombolic when in the reef area and just in the Cumbre Vieja reef area just in this part because all the seismic activity and the inflection of the of the land will be in, in just focus in this area but the problem is that when we know we don't know when and just to evacuate many people maybe what weeks or months before the eruption can be also very problematic, very, very problematic. And so I think that uh, the, 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 the change of the color was, from my point of view, was, was okay. What do you think, um, and there will be a time later to reflect more generally, but sometimes it's helpful to think about it in the moment as well, are there any things you feel we could be doing better? Uh, well, always, always, everything can be better. 
of course, everything. But with the scientific information what we have at that moment, with all the technology we have at that moment, I think that uh, we uh, make the data and the interpretation with that data just in the more probabilistic scenario, because we have not the possibility of a sure scenario. We only work on probabilistic scenario. But uh, before the eruption coming, the more probabilistic scenario of the area of the where was here. And the map of the simulation of the lava flow is very, very close to the final distribution of the lava flow. Uh, the prediction of the eruption will be a strombolian with and fissural strombolian. The eruption is fissural strombolian. But the problem is still for the sun is the when. And uh, when if we in the future can know the when, of course, the 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 the, the just the the different uh, advertisement to the population will be much, much better, I'm sure. Yes. But now it's really difficult. And what you're saying is very important because the fact that we knew or that in advance the orography has been studied so closely and that the route that the lava is taken is known, it means that we can keep people safe without having to evacuate huge areas because actually yes. life here, we're only a few kilometers away, hmm. but life here in the main is exactly. continuing as normal. Exactly. exactly. And that's important, isn't it? Hmm. Okay. But yes, because we know that when the start, when the eruption started, at that moment, the explosivity is higher because the magma is just, uh, just uh, go to the surface. But then, very very quickly, you have the fissural eruption with the strombolian and the pyroclastic uh, uh, column. But then the lava flow and the lava flow, even in the high speed, is 100 meters per hour. So you have the possibility to make evacuation. So the first day, of course, the house is very close to the uh, volcano. was no possibility for the people to make a good evacuation. But after... Sorry, can we just clarify? By a good evacuation, you mean they couldn't take everything out everything, of their house? Exactly. But the people were safe? The people were safe. Yeah, that's the most important. Can we say that whole sentence again, just without yeah. interrupting? So, yes. so yeah, uh, but it's an important yeah, yeah. point. Sorry. Yeah. So. Uh, if we can just go back to say on the first day. Yes, on the first day, the most important was the life of the people. And all the people was sure and no diet. But the houses very close to the volcano, people cannot uh, take most of the things. And, and, and most of these things are really remembered for these people because belong to the family and really was the, the, the problem, but after some day of the eruption, when the lava flow started to make the the more or less normal path that we just um, suppose in our in in the, in the model, people have the possibility just to take some of the of the things, but finally they know that his houses his. A banana plantation or something, will, the, the, the road will be destroyed, but have time to take the most important thing for, for, for these people. Because this kind of eruption is not so explosive that have this possibility to, to live more or less okay, very close to the, to the eruption. Some, some kilometers far from the eruption is no really problem, only from time to time for the ash the, the very fine ash, the smell the very fine ash, the gases, but the lava flow and the and the and the volcanic explosivity is just very constrained in the area of the eruption. Excellent answer. Thank you, Michael. That's really good. Um, do you think there's one or two things we didn't account for? So, for example, we've seen. Uh, the uh, synthetic covering of banana plantations burning and these thick toxic plumes coming up of dark black smoke. Um, banana plantations have chemical products that perhaps uh, cause some problems in terms of uh, respiration or um, some industrial areas that have burnt that perhaps we should have cleared. Do you feel that 
with hindsight and in future, we should consider these hazards and try to clear them out of the way, or is there not time to get them out of the way? For the mark? No, for people. If we have a banana plantation that has very toxic materials or the toxic coverings, so when the lava went down, you'd suddenly see these plumes of thick black, black smoke yes. going up. And that sometimes may be more uh, harmful for people mm. breathing in than anything that comes out of the volcano. Yes. Was that something that had been thought about in, as, a, as a hazard before? And if it hasn't, should we, for a future eruption, have in the plan that we need to clear those sort of things away from the path? Okay, yes, yes, I, I understand, sorry. Yes, most of the geysers, really, and uh, the, 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 the volcanic geysers, some of them are a little dangerous, but depending on the, of the, of the concentration, but also when the lava flow is flowing and destroying the banana plantation, many, many of the, of these banana plantations have plastic. So the, the, the black color just uh, in the front of the lava, of the lava, uh, of the lava low, is related to the burning of the many, many different things that we have in our houses, in, in our banana plantation. And uh, just when you are behind this burning of this area, you can yes uh, smell no good gases. Or no, maybe not dangerous, but the, 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 the smell is not 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 not, not good. Uh, but uh, when the lava flow is top, is petrified in a few hours. So the the burning of the lava flow is just in that moment. After that. It's only the, the, the gasification of the lava flow, the geyser, the volcanic geyser, that has a very low concentration of the dangerous geysers. And was that uh, a hazard that had been thought about before? Or, or did we think, as we thought maybe it was going to be in a different area, we hadn't thought about the banana plantations? And uh, Yes, I, 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 if we saw the lava delta of the... 1949 eruption, or San Juan eruption, is one of the most important areas for banana plantation. It's uh, close to Puerto Nao. Because the men just uh, make a transformation of the of the surface of the lava flow that we call Malpais. This kind of lava flow, AA type, we call in Canary Island Malpais. Uh, I think that we can do the same here, but not all along the, the lava flow in the slope. I think that uh, in the, in, about the lava flow, the, the, the normal geological process to the transformation of, the, of this rock to the soil is a, is a question of many, many times, hundreds and thousands of years. But uh, just when the lava flow is in flat area, for example, like the lava delta, like in the 1949, the transformation can be very quickly. And the transformation can be very quickly because about this lava flow, you can put all the deposit, all the pyroclastic deposit. That is a very uh, known uh, uh, agricultural technique here in Canary Island. Uh, so this transformation can be very quickly. But from my point of view, and it's my personal point of view, I would like that, of course, to, uh, to cut the lava flow for the roads, because the road, the connection between north and south of the island is very necessary to, again, to, to uh, re recover the, the old roads. But uh, the rest of the volcano and the rest of the, the, the cone, the, cinder, the, the different, the alignment of the cinder cone and the, all the lava flow field, I would like just to, to, to transform in a natural park or something for geotourism. I think will be, for, for my point of view, will be the, the most interesting thing. Maybe recover the, the, the lava delta, but uh, I think that if we can show to the rest of the world a, 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 a historical eruption that now is the most uh, monitored monitor, monitor eruption in the, in the history of the Canary Island, just to, to, to show to the rest of the world 
when the eruption stopped to with the different activities and something I think that will be much much more interesting that it transform the lava flow and the and all the lava flow but I don't know how the minister uh, 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 how the politics politics of the owner property of the area that destroyed the lava flow I don't know if can belong to the to the nation or to the Canary Island government, to the Spanish government, or to the legal owner. But uh, uh, I, I would like that, uh, of course, the, all the different administration help with money to the people that lost everything, not his life, but the rest, everything. I need all the administration and all the Canary people and all the Spanish people and of course, all the international people help to La Palma for these people, but but to obtain money, but uh, and to buy houses and farming or something, but then just uh, promote this eruption like a natural park. And actually, that could be a, a source of security for La Palma in future if it becomes that type of tourism which is normally a very sustainable type of tourism people who are very yes. in tune with nature people of a certain spending capacity that's not people who are coming to destroy exactly. and to, you know. exactly uh, I, I, I prefer this kind of, of, of tourism the, the natural the rural tourism the, the geological and biological tourism the landscape people like very much to, to observe the landscape and different center of uh, interpretation that the people know this landscape is forming by this kind of process this uh, landscape is, uh, is forming by biological and geological process um, and etc and uh, I prefer this kind of tourists that the massive tourists that we have in, in other parts of, of other islands so uh, I think there's a topic as well that we need to address um, because obviously we're based in Tenerife and traditionally, um, it's been very difficult to talk about volcanic activity, the possibility of future volcanic activity in Tenerife because of the huge amount yes. of reliance on tourism. Mm -hmm. And in the past, I think the people have tried not to talk about the possibility of a volcanic eruption in Tenerife. But the reality is, we need to be prepared for the possibility. Exactly. So, are we prepared for a possible volcanic eruption in Tenerife? Uh, I hope so. And and I think more or less now with the experience of El Hierro and experience of La Palma, I'm sure that civil protection is just prepared. And uh, but but I hope that this eruption also prepared to the people living at the different Canary Island. The more probabilistic eruption in the future will be again La Palma, El Hierro, because of the youngest island and Tenerife. But don't forget that we have historical eruption also in, Ten in Lanzarote. And in Gran Canaria, where uh, is my university, we have more than 24 eruptions in the last 11,000 years that we call Holocene in geological uh, yeah. time. And from the geological point of view, that, that means that Gran Canaria is also active. So also has possibility to the future eruption. And I, I hope that every people living in Canary Island Every people uh, that came here, Canary Island, for tourists, uh, must know that we live in the volcanic island. And this volcanism is, is the, 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 the geological process that we construct, make the construction of the island. Without volcanism, we don't, we don't have Canary Island. But from time to time, when we have eruption, the volcanism also can destroy some parts of the island. And we must be very prepared for the next eruption, not only scientific committee, not only administration, political administration, all the Canary people living here, permanent or temporarily. What things do we need to put in place to prepare for that? Education. Education. Geological education. Education, but mainly geological education. And this is a problem that we have in our country. In our country, 
the so geology sorry. is sorry. not. I'll, I'll ask again. He just knocked. Yeah, I just knocked the camera. But can you say we need to for preparation? We need to put in place. Just so, just to, so yeah. uh, you, uh, we don't have to use my question. It's just that sort of, we won't it, hear her voice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry. To prepare better. So I want you to start by saying to prepare better. We need to invest in education. Yeah, rangas day. Okay. So what do we need in order to prepare better? We need. To, in order to prepare. Ah, better. in order to prepare better. Start again. We need more. Perdona. Arranca tú, perfecto. In order to prepare better, what do you need? Uh, in order to prepare better, we need a much better education, especially in geology. And uh, and this is a key for the, I hope, for the future educational plan in all the Spain, because geology has no very uh, important role in the education uh, in the education just in the primary and the secondary education and here is the demonstration but not here also we have problem of the uh, of the of problem of uh, in uh, what to say flooding of the river uh, earthquake landslide or something and also the recluse of the geological recluse geology is so important, like biology, chemistry, physics. In the and here in Spain, uh, we have a problem for the general science, the general uh, science, uh, uh, experimental science, with the stu with the student, but especially with the geology. And this, the 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 the, the we must learn about this eruption that we know to know to. to we we know to uh, to to know when we look when we look our landscape here in Canary Island, in Spain, everywhere. We need to know how the geological process is working because it's the best way to know how we can defend of the geological hazards. So let me ask you this. For us, uh, in terms of Geo Tenerife, we bring students from abroad, we train, as you know. Um, why can't students... Tenerife, for us, is the perfect island classroom. It has more geological <coughs> variety than Hawaii, for example. Why can't you study volcanology at the local university? We try. We try to make a master of the university, but the problem is the bureaucracy. It is very difficult to to just to, to make all the to fill all the documentation is necessary many many hours and uh, we have very few time because uh, uh, university teachers we uh, professor we need to teach to our students we need to make a lot of time of research in my case of the volcanological research and also we have many many time to fill the documentation, the university documentation, every day. So just will, the, the best idea is just to make a master, not the geological degree, because the geological degree, you need to study not only volcanology, also tectonic, metamorphic, sedimentary, and something. And Canary Island is a volcanic island, but the other process uh, are not very good, the representation for, for a why geological degree? But uh, for volcanology, this is a natural laboratory. For me, even much better also than Hawaii because we have more, more different style of eruption. So more and more different kind of rocks, more and more different kind of relief of the landscape. So here, the, all the Canary Island, from the oldest island, Fuerteventura Lanzarote, to the youngest, La Palma Lierro, has a spectacular na uh, natural laboratory to study volcanology. And I hope that in the future, the Canarian University have the possibility to make a good master here uh, with, uh, with the money to do that and um, professor to do that, not only the, only the the few professors that we are now. And of course, one of the reasons that uh, Tenerife, for example, is a fantastic island classroom, as we call it, is because it's had different styles of eruption. Mm. Um, 
do we know enough about the different styles of eruption to know to be able to predict what might happen in the next? Yes. So what might happen in the next? Yes, it's troponin again, again, because uh, with the exception of one eruption. Sorry, would you mind saying in Tenerife the likelihood? I say in is Tenerife, the the most probabilistic uh, next eruption will be in the Strombolian style because all the historical eruptions in Tenerife are of this kind of uh, activity, but not only the historical. Also, most of the prehistoric eruptions are related, in the same here in La Palma, related to the reef structure, the La Esperanza reef, and also the North, uh, northeast rift. Uh, and most of these eruptions are this kind of activity strombolia. Only uh, very, very few eruptions just close to the, the to the Teide volcano have more uh, uh, high explosivity uh, style. But the probability for the just the, the new the, the future eruption will be in this style is more is lower than for the Strombolian eruption. So in Las Cañadas we have, uh, and in the Bandas de Sur, we have plenty of evidence which we're looking at with students every summer now at decoding how many very high explosive exactly. uh, events there have been in past. And the, what we're finding is that there have been more events than we realized yeah. because we're spending time decoding yeah, exactly. each of the little layers and that's quite time consuming. Uh, but we have had a subplinion, so a smaller but still very mm -hmm. large explosive eruption. I think it was 3,000 years ago in Montaña Blanca. Exactly. So if that happened, that's a different type of eruption? Or yes. You, or are you saying it's very unlikely that that'll happen? Uh, the probability is very low. But this, this kind of eruption happen, of course, the area affected uh, will be much, much higher than this eruption. And the, uh, uh, just to prepare this kind of eruption, it need more, uh, just uh, it need uh, more different, um, uh, we just say uh, rules because w this kind of ration affected to the traffic, uh, air traffic, to affected to the um, different many high surface, uh, high area, um, affected to the uh, all the economical sector, all the uh, communication sector will be more and more difficult to to live with this kind of eruption, that to live here with this kind of eruption. And just, uh, uh, I hope that uh, this kind of eruption is not, uh, will be the, 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 the next one on Tenerife. I, the probability is, is very low, and I hope that the next eruption on Tenerife, that maybe will be in a very close future, maybe not for our generation, but uh, uh, we are almost sure that we'll be in question of years, Ten hundred of years, but years, not millions of years that geology works. So, um, what you're saying uh, is in Tenerife there will be an eruption yes. in a few years' time. In we don't know if years. it's five, ten, or fifty, but Maybe. there will be an eruption. Maybe, yes. It's the probability is, is higher because this island has many eruptions in the last 11,000 years in the Holocene and also have historical eruption. But it's just say that uh, with the session of Montaña Blanca, the rest of the eruption are uh, Strombolian. Can I ask you a very basic question? Do we know enough about the precursory signals of an eruption to be able to know if the oncoming eruption is going to be Strombolian or if it's going to be Plinian? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, depend of uh, of uh, precursor in the geological history. Uh, for example, if in, we have a seismic crisis just centered in Teide, for example, the probability of uh, more explosive, more higher explosivity eruption that the Strombolia is much, much higher than if the precursor, the same precursor is in another area. So uh, the where is very important. And to know the where, the most important is just to know the very geological, very in very detail, the, ge the past geology 
the past geological area with a very detailed map and very detailed geological work. And uh, we have the lack that in Tenerife, uh, the last, uh, um, the last uh, 11,000 years, we know now very in detail. Thank you to the uh, professor Juan Carlos Carracedo that I have the, I, I'm very lucky because I can work with him in this project uh, some years ago. So we know very, very in detail, and also we know very in detail in Gran Canaria with my colleague Alejandro Rodriguez and uh, my colleague Mar Marichel Aulinas. And, uh, and I'm sure that the rest of the area, and El Hierro we call now very, very in detail because we are finished at that moment a very detailed work of the, this very recent volcanic activity in El Hierro. So the, so the precursors can be more or less similar, but the, the precursor is in some area with the uh, recent geological past uh, with high explosivity, you know that the probability to reproduce this kind of eruption will be much higher than if you have only a Strombolian eruption. So we have had um, a series, I think, uh, of nine seismic swarm activities in the last couple of years here in La Palma, and then the tenth one led to an eruption. But we have some, <clears throat> we've also had some periods of uh, seismic emergency in Tenerife. I think the, the, the last greatest one was in 2004, but we have had others since then. Is that just normal background activity, or is that the system reactivating? Uh, well, it's a scientific debate about that, but uh, the different seismic crisis in Tenerife uh, can be related to the maybe in the future future uh, uh, um, what's, what's, I, I forgot the name so this uh, up uh, what's this, uh, uh, no uh, upgrade no Eso, o sea que puede ser a recharge no cuando se dice esta sismicidad es una precursora de no pero de de una reactivación oh, reactivation no, es otra palabra técnica, pero se me ha olvidado. Ah, Perdón. bueno, don't worry, we don't Sorry. need to be technical. This is not for a science audience. Sorry. Don't worry. So, uh, if you could just say the, the recent act, uh, the activity, the seismic. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting scientific debate that is still, still not resolved. Some people think that it's a normal seismic uh, background, but another people think that the pre, maybe can be precursor of a next eruption. In Tenerife. in Tenerife. Here in La Palma, the first uh, seismic crisis started four years ago, in the October of October of uh, 2017. Okay, so we just need to say that again, sorry, because it's really important, Paco, because we forgot to say Tenerife. <laughs> and I want to uh, explain, you know, so in Tenerife, and you explain what you just said about the seismic activity, and here in La Palma, it started in 2017. Okay, okay. So just, just briefly for a non-science audience, okay. but that'd be really helpful. So in Tenerife, in Tenerife, we have a, a seismic crisis with, from the 2004, and uh, and some people think that is normal seismic activity in the background of the Canary Island, but another people think that it can be precursor of the next eruption. Uh, in La Palma, the first seismic crisis we have uh, four years ago, in October of uh, 2017, and four years later we have the eruption. So we need to, to study in detail, but the, the most important thing is just the seismic crisis where the depth of the hypocenter, because the depth is in the mantle, the possibility to finally the magma uh, ar arrive to the surface are 50-50, maybe yes, not. But we need time. So if the hypocenter, like here in, Cana in La Palma, in October uh, 2011, the hypocenter was very, very dead, more than 20 kilometers dead. When the seismic crisis, one week before of this eruption, was just at uh, 10, 11, 5 kilometers. So 
that's at the moment that we can call, we can talk about the next eruption. Eruption, next eruption. Since uh, they presented, we don't reach this kind of, uh, of, of, of depth and the inflection of the surface is not so important. It's a, only it's a question of scientific debate, nothing more. So earthquakes and inflation, inflation. are the two key And geysers are the three more gases. important uh, precursors of the okay. volcanic activity. Paco, in your everyday job, you are an academic. What's it like suddenly being thrown into this situation where you're a member of Pevolca and you're taking, you know, you're informing and you're part of a team which are trying to keep people safe? What's the stress of that like? <laughs> Very high. Because uh, we have every day, one week before the eruption, I have every day a meeting of the scientific committee every morning. And then, Sunday, then I have just in La Palma to work in the field, but also when I come back to Gran Canaria, I have many, many classes with my students. And, uh, and also I have many, many emails to, to answer, many, many delay email to answer, and I have many, many petitions of the journalists to, to make interview, to, to, to go to the TV, radio, uh, newspaper, and something. So uh, really, the stress is very high. And, uh, but also, when I uh, came here the, f the, 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 the first time, one day bef uh, after the eruption, I, w I came here with a very exciting, for ge I am geology, and this is the opportunity to know just in, in direct uh, the, 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 the f geological phenomena that I work. But after looking at the destruction of the lava flow, uh, was also this kind of uh, feeling that uh, human feeling that is is very also very hard to 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 live with with that just to 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 know and to talk with people that lost everything is also very very difficult. Are you afraid that uh, when all of this is over and people look back at how it was handled, that there's going to be recriminations or... Because at the moment, people seem to be working together well, which is great, but what happens afterwards? I hope that we can be in the same line that actual collaboration. I, 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 I hope no recrimination at all, no recrimination to the uh, science because Sands save many, 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 many lives with the COVID and now here in La Palma with the volcano. Without sands, uh, the life for the, 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 the normal life of the people that we like, uh, European style, will be impossible. Will be impossible. So for that, every country need to, to uh, put some amount of money in the science, and not only in the, uh, we say the science very, very directly, directly to the industry or something, no, only in the basic science, to advance in the basic science is essential to advance in the practic science. And, uh, and the government must think about that. Uh, but the people here in La Palma, or the people suffer the COVID, uh, must know that science saves life and they uh, hope no recrimination because science, science uh, saves life but science is not uh, God. Science has still limitation of the knowledge of man. but this limitation every new eruption we uh, we uh, for the scientific is the new opportunity to know more about the volcanology and maybe the next eruption of this kind of a strike thrombolic eruption here or whatever uh, will be Fogo, Cape, Green Cape, um, Azores, or whatever will be 
much better understand because we just advance in the knowledge of this. And because of that, here now in La Palma is working hundreds of scientific of everywhere. Finally, I want to ask you, that's such a good reply. Thank you for that. And I just want to finally ask you about that point because one impression we get from outside is that there's lots of scientists working here, hmm. but it's not clear how we will be able to benefit from the research that they're doing because maybe they will publish in a year, in two years. Do you think there should be a requirement for scientists who come and work on this eruption to share their findings? Yes. Could you say that? Can you start with that? I think. Yes. I think that uh, will be very, very important that in the future when the eruption is stopped to promote Congress, International Scientific Congress, to put just together all the uh, advance in the, in the lodgement of uh, this eruption. And I am sure that will be, will do, because it's very common in the scientific, uh, um, in the, uh, for, the, for the scientists to meet in the different Congress. Uh, but that also I am sure that uh, now, for in that moment of the crisis, many, many scientific data help to the authorities to, 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 to take a, a very uh, a very good decision and uh, but another kind of study for example the study that I am now I am now working about the geochemistry and something is not for the that moment of the crisis but for the future and the future maybe can be one year two years three years doesn't matter the science is a global and all the advance in the science and our field in the volcanology will be very good for all the scientific in every world. Brilliant. Lovely back off. Very nice. Thank Matt, you very much. Do you think we missed something? I just want one, one uh, clarification. Um, we're sitting here hearing the volcano in the background so much. I wonder if we can just have a sentence to reference the sound of the volcano. Otherwise, in the background, everyone's going to be thinking, what What's is that, that noise? What's <laughs> that noise? It's like... <laughs> so so can... just saying, um, you know... As you can hear, uh, yes. and just say something about the noise. Yeah. Just okay. Yeah. Um, we can hear the noise of the volcano. Maybe say, as you can hear, the, uh, the eruption is still ongoing. Because okay. we can hear something uh, just a bit. And more. what? What Sorry, makes the noise? Why is it that noisy? What's the noise? This is the our volcano. Now, actually, it still is is active, and uh, well, I hope that this noise will be uh, very short in time, but uh, maybe we must uh, not enjoy, but we must observe and, uh, and study in very detail. And one thing, you mentioned that, um, this is right at the start, that it wasn't, that it wasn't really, um, there wasn't enough information, there wasn't enough understanding to um, gauge precisely, more precisely, where volcano eruptions were going to happen. What do you think is needed moving forward for the scientific community to be better prepared and better understanding of what is where happening, it's going where happen. it's going to happen? You know, do you need more money? Do you need more support? Does the government yes. need to just say, give you more access, more collaboration? What, is, what do you think is the, 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 the key, key thing? The key thing, and this is to... So yes. In order to better understand where an eruption might in come order up, to best understand the, 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 the next eruption. Sorry, but can you start again? Does that, do you hear no. the dog? No. Yes, fine, it's natural. In order to understand the, 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 the next eruption, the, the key will be also the, the collaboration between the scientific, com the scientific community uh, to, to put in common all the uh, scientific advances related to this eruption in the Congress International Meeting, maybe here in La Palma, but also just to advance in the, in the global sense, and especially here in the volcanology, uh, it, we need more money. We need more money. The, the, it is necessary to understand that the best way to, for the society to advance is just more money to in, uh, to uh, force uh, for the the science. 
But one of the key questions we couldn't answer, and we still can't answer in science, is where, precisely where, a volcano is going to come out. What do we need to do to be able to understand where it's going to come out? Where? The geological the, uh, No sabíamos dónde iba a estar, o sea, sabíamos más o menos cuándo, qué tipo de erupción, eh, pero lo que no sabíamos era exactamente la localización de dónde iba a salir el volcán. No, el dónde sí, el where sí. Pero exactamente. Bueno, más o menos. en una área. Okay. No, es imposible decir okay. exactamente, es imposible. So how, how accurate can we be with where it's going to? Uh, well, the network of... Uh, of uh, sensors, the different sensors of uh, seismic sensor, kilometer, uh, GPS and something, uh, as more dense is this network, better information, but uh, also as you have more historical record for this kind of, of uh, network of uh, sensor, you have better compression or understanding of the, of the phenomena. It's so it's much better just to know the to to acotar is uh, accurate. No, accurate. Acotar, acotar the acotar la zona más uh, accurate. No, it's more accurate. Accurate the area where finally volcano uh, starting to to develop. There was just one point I wanted to raise about uh, collaboration, which is so important in many different areas, and particularly mm. in something that can have such a direct effect on people and their lives. Um, we have lots of different institutions. I mean, I think Tenerife is probably one of the most highly monitorized uh, volcanoes in the world. Do all the institutions working there collaborate together because they're all working with public funding? Do they all work together, or are they all trying to carry out their own studies and somehow... Well, I hope that this can be the, the first step that to promote the more narrow collaboration between the different, uh, the different institutions that have the sensor, the, the equipment to, to study the, 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 the seismic and volcanic uh, activity in, in Spain, not only in Canary Island, in Spain. I hope that uh, this eruption can promote this kind of more narrow collaboration. Now, during the, this uh, volcanic activity, I think that collaboration between the different institutions that uh, every day we talk in the scientific committee is very, very close. 